Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very accomplished tech entrepreneur from Bangalore, India, Mr. Parth Chadha. Parth, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Ashutosh. It's good to meet you. Thank you. Parth is the Chief Executive Officer and founder of Stan, which is a blockchain-based esports fan engagement startup that lies at the intersection of mobile gaming and esports, influencer tech, and Web3. So, Parth, before we talk about Stan, tell me about your own journey and what got you interested in this space. Sure. Um, it's been 10 odd years now, I think, when I started my uh, gaming industry journey, I would say. Uh, as an entrepreneur, it became even later, but I started building hyper casual games in 2013. Uh, I shipped some of them as a freelancer consultant to some e commerce companies back then in India. And everybody was trying to do gamification for retention purposes. That was the new thing back then. And I started with lightweight games uh, while I was in, in my college and then. Uh, while I was working at JP Morgan, I built another pretty cool sports game, which was sold to an OTT platform. That was my big first paycheck from gaming, uh, like which kind of motivated me that, hey, you know, I should start do, uh, doing this for full time. So post JP, I got into gaming full time. I, uh, I built a platform for gaming, which was 25 plus games. Um, so I've looked at different genres of gaming. Um, I think the thing which excited me to get into the space was um, India was just getting started. I think that is one big reason. Second is I always enjoyed the social angle around gaming, like people uh, hanging out, making friends around gaming, which is something which we grew up doing and uh, part of these, you know, cafes around our house and then now shifted to an online world of gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of these kind of uh, triggered that vibe that, uh, I need to sp I need to be part of this this industry specifically India which is pretty hot now mm -hmm. we have 100 million gamers so uh, this is where it all it, it all began yeah mm -hmm. amazing and what is the story behind founding Stan and what was your motivation to create a blockchain based esports fan fan engagement platform sure uh, I mean while I uh, spent so much time building games, monetizing games. Um, um, I, I got to be involved in a lot of influencer marketing while I was doing all of this, right? And in fact, not just me, I think any and every startup or company in India who is doing gaming, uh, uh, be it shipping lightweight games or platforms, they have a huge, huge marketing spend in influencers. Mm -hmm. And we had this... Uh, so the influencer term got coined even after the COVID happened, right? Like everybody started thinking that, hey, you know, I should become a YouTuber. And mm -hmm. and we see, we saw a lot of YouTubers coming in, um, um, shooting to millions of subscribers. Uh, but there was a very long tail of such influencers who were not able to really build their communities, monetize their communities, mm -hmm. right? So we felt that there is a diehard need to, help these guys build their fandom, grow their fandom, and also help them monetize their audience. Mm -hmm. So that is that led to, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, the inception of Stan. We started with a broad idea that we would connect gamers and influencers together and also gamers and gamers. Um, you would find these gaming audiences sitting on WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, uh, Instagram uh, chattings and stuff, watching YouTube. But the communities around gaming, they were not very deeply immersive engagement happening. Mm -hmm. Like if I go to YouTube, I'm just watching the video. I'm not like engaging with the guy, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, engaging with the others who are watching the video. Uh, so, and gaming always has a lot to do with communities. So all of this together, we felt let's build a platform uh, where we could solve for the gamer, for the creator. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then Stan got born. I had, uh, I, mean, I was fortunate to have some great partners with me to start this journey who had looked at things very closely in depth. And then everybody was so excited. Fascinating. 
And how does blockchain techno technology enhance the user experience on stand? So I would say we we've, we've been a very um, um, community first user first platform. Uh, and if you look at gaming industry, uh, uh, the user is kind of very you know impatient. They keep jumping from one platform to the other. And uh, uh, so if you bring in blockchain as a tech, mm -hmm. uh, it, it it is in itself very heavyweight, right? Like yeah. people like us don't understand blockchain in depth. If you ask me, and mm -hmm. if you want to give it to a gamer sitting in Jaipur or Meerut in like tier two, tier three cities of India. Mm -hmm. They would be like, you know, what is this? I don't want to get into this. I just want to play my game. I want to make friends and go, mm. right? Uh, so we solved on how um, we could leverage technology and boost these um, ownership feeling, uh, retention, and, you know, the special exclusive stuff which we could get uh, to the users. And the element of blockchain, which says that you are the true owner of something, you can actually own something which you can track on the blockchain. Nobody else can, you know, uh, because a lot of communities and platforms still are very, you know, centralized. Like if a game, if let's say I am a gamer, I am spending like lakhs of rupees, thousands of rupees in the game to buy some skins, to buy CDs and stuff. And suddenly let's say the game goes away. Like we saw the, you know, a ban of PUBG mobile, right? Mm -hmm. So lot of gamers felt disheartened that, you know, I spent so much time and money. Now the game is not there. Or there is another situation where I start stop losing interest in the game and I move to another game. Mm -hmm. So we felt that blockchain could essentially solve for all of this. Ki I can invest in gaming instead of we spend in gaming. The word changes, right? So on Stan also, you your wallet is created. Your assets sit into that wallet of blockchain. So whatever you buy on Stan is going on the chain. And uh, it doesn't help much around user experience, but it helps around retention. It helps around, you know, feeling of the user that I am special. I hold this, I hold this special exclusive thing. So those are the layers where we use blockchain basically. Fascinating. Well said. And uh, how do you approach growth and scaling for a startup that intersects multiple industries like mobile gaming, Esports and blockchain itself is a separate industry. So, like as we speak, we are trending on number two on the Google Play Store. If you look at, and that's been something very exciting for us in the last six months. We are trending. We have touched nine million users now in in a time span of two years. Uh, so, I think we 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 understand how distribution works in gaming to some extent at least if not like all of it but uh, and that is also because of the last seven eight years i've spent in the industry my team has i've got some amazing bunch of folks mm -hmm. uh, and i think gaming and entertainment and all of it works on you know a lot of word of mouth and a lot of like community driven things like mm -hmm. you know like that like you would find somebody in your house playing a game or spending some time on an app and you would go and ask, Bhai, kya kar rahe ho, yaar? what are you doing? I see you sitting half an hour, one hour every day. What is this product? Tell me. Mm -hmm. And then the other person explains you and you like it, you, you download and jump into it. Mm -hmm. So even today, 70, 75% of our users are organically, you know, getting from their friends to know about Stan, getting from their YouTuber to know about Stan. So I think there's right. a lot to do with influencer marketing, mm -hmm. referrals, and that entire problem we are solving for the creators and for the gamers, mm -hmm. that is leading to a mass adoption of the platform. Mm -hmm. Well said. And how do you engage with the esports community and support professional players and teams? So Stan often organizes tournaments. Um, that's like the biggest uh, uh, bread and butter for, let's say, an esports player, a professional, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if I talk about from a player perspective, mm -hmm. esports is a huge thing. We have players, we have coaches, we have, uh, you know, tournament organizers and a lot of stuff, right? So, but to answer your question, we do a lot of tournaments. We have an interesting IP called Stan Campus Connect, mm -hmm. where we have partnered with 70 colleges and universities in India, mm -hmm. where we are getting them uh, those esports professionals onboarded and they come and participate in all of these events and activities and tournaments we do. So I think these are the areas where we really do something and a lot of esports players launch their 
uh, uh, collectibles, their items on stand. They sell it to their fans. Mm. Uh, like, like I'm an esports player who is very, let's say, uh, good at Call of Duty. I would want to teach people and earn money, right? So a lot of those courses are also sold on the platform. So, mm. so these are the different uh, ways how we help the uh, esports community. Interesting. And you spoke about influencers. How do influencers play a role in the Stan ecosystem? Like I said, anybody who can build a community, get 10 people together is an influencer for Stan, right? Like even like if I am hosting, a, I have a WhatsApp community group, which has, let's say 50 people and we play PUBG mobile sometimes, right? I can come to Stan and start making money from those 50 people. And I can give them exclusive game rooms. Like I would uh, create a game lobby and, you know, share the ID password of that lobby on the Stan app. Mm -hmm. And people would gift me some items on the app. Like virtual gifting is something which is a big revenue generation for these influencers on the app. Mm -hmm. So like I said, there is a huge long tail of influencers close to about, I would say India has a minimum of 250K uh, like 2 lakh 50,000 influencers who can potentially monetize, who can mm. make money either from brands or from their fans. Mm. So they come on our platform, they build their community, they host live events. Uh, there's something called stand clubs on the app, which is like an audio room, like the podcast we are doing, right? Something like that. So mm. uh, for 500, 2000 people will join to just hear them out, right. to just hear them talking. So these are the various ways how influencers can monetize, grow their audience on the platform. Fascinating. And how do you ensure a seamless and engaging experience for both the gamers and the fans? I mean, that's the challenging part of building a tech product, right? <laughs> that's, that's something which my team is, you know, always on the toes to kind of deliver that. There are a lot of things which come into play while you're building a platform which is for scale mm -hmm. and especially for gamers or any end user who's very impatient, right? You cannot just like beat servers down for like an hour or half an hour. They just start feeling so much that, hey, what's what happened? My, you know, the app is not working. So we've kind of got those experienced folks in the team who are able to, uh, you know, run those things at a scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we've got a very good customer support team as well. Uh, uh, we we also use a little bit of AI ML for user you know user persona mapping user experience uh, understanding cohorts and a lot of that mm. and a lot of data analysis going behind you know all of this so I would say the the complete team is kind of you know helping us make that happen. Well said. And how do you ensure security and uh, transparency of transactions? So, yeah, I mean, we use AWS, we use Google Cloud. So there's a lot of gateway uh, uh, security uh, firewalls, uh, you know, established there. We use the right authentication mechanisms whenever, let's say, a small uh, uh, content is accessed on the platform or mm -hmm. a game is played. So a lot of those user authentication layers are there in place, which are pretty solid, intact. Uh, like I said, the lot of learnings from data analysis team, which comes into the play, we use like BigQuery machine learning to kind of track a lot of things. So I think a lot of this together has kind of built that secure, safe platform. Uh, we use good, secure ga payment gateways in the platform so that any of these transactions are kind of recorded and secured. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have those mechanisms in place. Wonderful. And how do you plan to integrate mobile gaming more deeply into your platform? Great question. I mean, today, 10 of us can just launch a game from Stan. Mm -hmm. And the game might not be on Stan app itself, but you could go to that game. So we are doing certain backward integrations with mobile games. We are working with publishers on the same. A lot of new games are coming to us. That's an interesting view because we have crazy amount of daily active users, monthly active users on the platform that a lot of games want to get access to this audience. Mm -hmm. So they work in depth to integrate uh, through API. So, and, and interestingly, Stan on the platform, if I have a profile as a gamer, 
I can use the same across multiple games. Mm. I don't need to re-authenticate on those games. So the the standalone gamer profile is something a very game-changing technology which we have kind of worked on. And um, yeah, so a lot of these ways where we are partnering and ex- enhancing the mobile gaming experience. Amazing. Pant, how do you see the convergence of gaming, esports, and Web three evolving in the next few years? So Web3 is definitely a game-changing technology uh, because we are seeing a new era of internet coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ownership transfer is something which is key of key about why people are liking it. Like people don't want to give ownership to a to a you know a publisher or a studio to control my destiny, mm-hmm. right? Like I gave you an example that I spend too much on the game and the game goes ban or I lose interest from the game. I cannot liquidate my assets in the game, right? right? So I think the true ownership, uh, uh, and then cross-platform play, cross games play. Like I bought a character in game A, I could use that character in game B also. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of these things might be is something which we are solving from with Web three and industry seeing a, a a boom coming up, and mm-hmm. these are the areas where we could actually see unlocking the right. The true value for a gamer, because mm. today the publisher controls a lot of revenues right. uh, for them, right? The mm. the gamer spends like hours playing the game, and they don't get too much incentivized out of it, mm. right? So a lot of these ownership, security layers, cross uh, platform uh, activities. I think these are the things which the blockchain world will unlock for the gaming industry. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And what are some of the key technological innovations? that you are excited about uh, when you are looking at an implementation on Stan? I mean, I'm very excited about how uh, the, you know, Gen AI thing has come up. Mm. Uh, In fact, a lot of our uh, uh, developers are already experimenting things around it. We have a lot of communities, activities and content creation happening on the platform. Mm. Somehow we use AI to unlock all of that. Uh, interestingly, a lot of our design team and tech team is already using tools like GPT and stuff mm. so to kind of fasten up their existing processes, right? Mm. Uh, I think AI is, is uh, doing both. It's increasing efficiency in delivery and also kind of helping us come up with newer in- initiatives, right? So mm. I'm, I'm very excited about this this angle as well. Amazing. I have time for uh, two more questions. What trends do you see in the esports industry that could impact the future of STAN? I mean, why I am long on this is in itself the answer to this. Uh, I have seen um, consumers increasing day by day in the gaming and esports industry, right? Uh, today, we are more than 500 million gamers in India. And if you look at, look at the Gen Zs and millennials, they are not watching cricket too much. They are not, you know, out on the road playing sports too much. Sorry about that, but mm. that's the true part of it, right? They're just playing games. So every year we are seeing a crazy amount of Kegar, which is helping the industry grow. Mm. So I am excited about the fact that there will be a, a, a decade where gaming is mainstream. Like mm. you will see pre-downloaded gaming apps in the phones. You would see... Uh, uh, parents spending too much on gaming for their children mm. and there will be gaming uh, uh, academies and, and esports academies. All of this has already started, mm. but it's still on a very early stage right now. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that decade and it's definitely inevitable because uh, everything supports it. We have cheaper internet, we have cheap mobile phones now, uh, you know, thanks to Geo and all of these phones which we have. Um, and we have got access to uh, UPI, which is helping a lot in transformation of gaming industry, right? Uh, people used to complain that India gamers don't pay. Mm. But now if you look at the numbers, like we have crazy amount of uh, transactions. On Stan itself, we have close to 3 million transactions every month. So people want to do UPI and small, small transactions. So yeah, yeah. I mean, in the nutshell, esports and gaming is going to get huge and yes. huge and huge and uh, we would see that growth coming in. Amazing. And my last question to you, Part, what legacy do you hope to leave in the gaming and esports industry? 
that's a question which like we keep discussing not just gaming and esports i personally i want to build a product which touches like scale uh, which is becoming a usual uh, uh, you know behavior to use like that product is something which is solving some big problem at scale uh, and and gaming is something which really comes to you know my heart or you know i can really understand and play around with so i believe i will stand is something like that which solves for the masses it it goes beyond india goes to emerging market so mm-hmm. looking forward to having that in play that people think 10 years down the line that stand is something which uh, people started with and it's it's you know it's the pre installed gaming gamers companion app in their phones absolutely pass on that note uh, thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey i think what you're doing with stan seems very very exciting i must go and check out the app also but i think i've learned many many new things from you today on gaming and the technologies that are going into it and what's even more interesting is how large the indian gaming industry is half a billion people is what you said are currently active gamers who are all who are a lot of them who are willing to pay money for it and you're absolutely right yeah. the general view was that indians don't like to pay i think that is something that you have just told me uh, you know with upi has started to change a lot thank you for speaking to me and all the very best to you and to stan thank you so much thanks for having me ashish it was a great time thank you thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals you can also follow us on youtube facebook instagram and twitter just search for the brand called you